the Prime Minister of Canada uh, will sit down and sort of go over everything that's on the table here, including, uh, and he is watching quite closely, these China trade talks, as is this next gentleman, uh, the former U.S. Treasury Chief Representative in Beijing, Michael Harrison, who knows of what he speaks, so he'll let us in on all the secrets. Uh, Michael, very good to see you. Thank you. A um, couple of very simple questions I have. Bringing ZTE into this whole discussion, uh, face value looks like a dangerous, reckless thing to do. What do you think? Well, uh, so there's been a longstanding uh, trade investigation into China's intellectual property practices. And, of course, President Trump has long focused on trade with China. Then, somewhat out of the blue, about a month ago, the Commerce Department issued what's called a denial of export order on ZTE. Now, that is not really directly related to the trade negotiations. It was for ZTE flouting a previous settlement related to export controls to Iran and North Korea. And that was they cheated. They cheated. Right. And then they, they reached a settlement last year, and they were found to have cheated on the settlement. So, but suddenly, this becomes a key issue, because we're talking about China's second largest telecom equipment company, 80,000 some odd employees, and putting this firm out of business was really threatening to derail trade conversations, possibly even hurt China's cooperation on North Korea. So the Chinese are very concerned about it. Extremely concerned about it. And this has fed a narrative in Beijing that the U.S. is not looking for a trade deal, instead that the U.S. is fundamentally hostile to China and really looking to contain China's rise as a technology leader. That's the way it's being viewed in Beijing. So the president was faced with the decision of whether or not he should take this uh, off the table, which would help for short-term tensions, and I think it has, but it's somewhat hurt him at home because now this has become a political football. Um, where do you see it going? Because you and I were saying during the break, there's the North Korean thing, and you want to make sure the Chinese continue to help, as presumably they have on that, and, and getting the talks, if they're still on, <laughs> for June on, and, 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 and off without a hitch. Um, where do you see us going with this? Is something going to come out of it where the tariffs, the threat of tariffs, have actually done the trick? They've gotten the Chinese to make concessions. Well, what's happened is what, the way it looked earlier this week is that there would be a mini deal on ZTE. So one of China's senior officials is in Washington this week for negotiations. The easiest thing for the two sides to work out would be an agreement for saving ZTE, the telecom company, right. in exchange for certain specific asks of the U.S. for China. The president tweeted this morning that, no, this is not a mini deal. This is about a larger trade package. What that does is it raises the stakes for meetings this week. And I think it's going to be difficult to really uh, achieve a grand bargain this week because on the trade negotiations, the two sides are very far apart. We're talking about really difficult issues. But still workable? I think it's going to be difficult in the short term. So, okay. But the president has raised the stakes, and now he is personally involved in a way that he hasn't been previously.